SpaceX Dragon, we're go for launch. Let's light this Seven, candle. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Liftoff of the Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon. Go NASA. Go SpaceX. America has launched. For the first time in history, NASA astronauts have launched from America in a commercial spacecraft to the International Space Station. T plus 30 seconds into this historic mission. Flying crew on board Dragon and Falcon 9 and look at them go. I think this is something that should really get people, I mean, right on the heart. The vehicle is supersonic. It's been nine years since we've launched American astronauts on American rockets from American soil. This is the first Falcon 9 to carry humans to orbit. What a great day for the United States of America. One meter to go. We have docking. And now, after more than two months aboard the International Space Station, Please confirm your visors are down and that you are ready for undock and departure. Down and we're ready for departure. The crew safely returned to Earth in another historic first. We're looking at dragons streaking across the sky on its re-entry through the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, and then those parachutes are going to kick in. This is something that the whole world can take some pleasure in and, and can really look at this as an achievement of humanity. Splashdowns. No matter where you are on planet Earth, this is a good thing. And, and I hope it brightens your day. As you can see on your screen, we have visual confirmation for Splashdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 7. We have a go for made to start. 4. Three, two, one, booster ignition. Since the space liftoff. shuttle was retired nearly a decade ago, it's been a race among several aerospace companies to be chosen as NASA's solution to carry humans and cargo to space. Boeing and SpaceX have emerged as the key suppliers. And now Elon Musk's SpaceX has made history with its revolutionary Crew Dragon spaceship. I mean, I'm really quite overcome uh, with emotion on uh, this day. it have been 18 years working towards this goal, so it's, it's hard to believe that it's happened. On May 30th, a Falcon 9 rocket with a dragon on top lifted off from the Kennedy Space Center from the same launch pad that sent the Apollo astronauts to the moon 50 years ago. Without a space shuttle alternative, the United States had been dependent upon Russia to keep an American presence on the International Space Station. For the last nine years, we have been purchasing rides on Russian Soyuz rockets, and those costs have gone up significantly. Costs of nearly $4 billion. The International Space Station is a critical capability for the United States of America. Having access to it is also critical. There's a lot of significance to bringing these missions back to American soil. First is an alternative to the Soyuz solution that's out there. But uh, as an American, I I'm just proud of what we'll be able to accomplish to and fly again on an American rocket from American soil. And lift off of it's remarkable to think that Atlanta. the so last time that uh, a, a crewed launch vehicle departed from the United States was 2011. And so I think it would be really quite profound to be back in the saddle again and to be launching frequently. And the mission demonstrates a remarkable role reversal for how America goes to space. And this time when we do it, we're doing it differently than we've ever done it before. NASA is not going to purchase, own, and operate the hardware. In fact, we're going to be a customer. With both Dragon and Starliner programs in the works, NASA has redundancy something they depend on in all aspects of spaceflight. Once this test mission is complete, Dragon will be cleared to fly official crewed missions, and Starliner will continue development of their program. SpaceX has been hauling cargo on Dragon to ISS since 2012. 
We've flown Dragon uh, to and from the space station successfully uh, 20 times for cargo mission. They successfully completed the first test run of the all-new Crew Dragon to the ISS in 2019. Last year, we had our Demonstration 1 mission, which was the, the Crew Dragon uh, without any crew on board. Went to the space station, they opened up the hatch, and then came back home. Demo 1 marked the first time in history a spacecraft docked autonomously without help from the mothership. Who was in the driver's seat? A test dummy. This new mission, known as NASA's SpaceX Demo-2, is the final major test to certify SpaceX's revolutionary crew transportation system for long-duration missions to ISS. Most importantly, that Dragon can safely transport passengers. This historic flight used a brand new spacecraft, like some notable predecessors. We think about uh, Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, and then Space Shuttle. Those are really the four times in history when we have put humans on brand new spacecraft. And now we're doing it for a fifth time. The rocket that will take Crew Dragon to space is one of the most critical pieces of the mission. It follows a standard set by the Saturn V, the rocket that took Apollo astronauts to the moon, and still the most powerful rocket on the planet, releasing a whopping 7.6 million pounds of thrust at launch. The space shuttle debuted in 1981 as the world's first reusable spacecraft. It launched strapped to two rocket boosters and glided back to Earth. Crew Dragon is a free-flying spacecraft. It gets its lift into space atop a rocket, like the Apollo missions. The 23-story tall SpaceX Original delivers nearly two million pounds of thrust. Lift off of the Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon. Go NASA, go SpaceX. The profile is somewhat different for Dragon than it is for shuttle. You tend to pull more Gs. With Falcon 9, when we have the staging from first to second stage, you get kind of a weightlessness then the G profile could experience somewhere on the order of four plus Gs, where a shuttle, we were limited to just three Gs. Putting humans atop any rocket requires risk and an escape plan. The most complex engineering tests ever done. We actually put Dragon on top of Falcon, launch the Falcon, and then initiate the launch escape system. And we demonstrated that Dragon is capable of, of carrying the crew away from uh, Falcon um, in the event of an emergency. Extensive testing and test flights covering every aspect of this mission have been going on for years. I think we have pounded the issues associated with Falcon and Dragon more than any other mission we've had in our history. We have been to the International Space Station 21 times. This race for space will open a new chapter for the U.S., but requires great risk and has not been without its serious challenges. Boeing's Starliner narrowly avoided a disaster during a 2019 unmanned flight test. The spacecraft failed to reach the space station due to a software glitch, but returned successfully to Earth. And while SpaceX has completed a major milestone, it's come at a big price, overcoming many hurdles. It's been 18 years working towards this goal. That when starting SpaceX, we may maybe had a 10% chance of reaching orbit. It took us uh, four attempts just to get to orbit with Falcon 1. In the last two years, Falcon and Dragon have experienced several test failures, but all the learning has brought them to this point. We should not lose sight of the fact that this is a test flight, that we're taking it very, very seriously from a safety perspective. 
While the space shuttle was hardware heavy, Dragon is light and sleek. The two big differences really are the shuttle was a, a hauling truck. It could take a big payload into orbit. With crews for the space shuttle, we were doing it with some really old hardware. I think uh, laptops hadn't been invented, of course. The Dragon is a, is a smaller capsule, so a smaller crew, uh, not a lot of cargo. It'll also look a lot more modern on the inside. Now all that capability is really incorporated on board the vehicle and internalized so that it uh, does make for a, a nice clean cockpit. One of the biggest differences that you see, of course, is that you know, from a traditional cockpit designed many decades ago where you have many switches and knobs and dials, um, inside of Dragon you have these large touch screens. This is a, a craft made by humans, for humans. This is like something that I think humanity should be excited about. True Dragon is a 21st century spacecraft and we wanted it to, to not only be as safe and reliable as you'd expect from the most advanced spacecraft in the world, but we, we also wanted to look amazing and look beautiful. I mean, spacecraft and spaceflight should be inspiring. It can carry the crew safely to the station and bring them home without direct intervention, but of course we want to make sure that we give the crew all the tools possible in case they need to manually pilot Dragon's flight. While this mission marks a new era in human spaceflight, the two astronauts on board are veterans. Both Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley flew on NASA's space shuttle. Hurley was on the very last shuttle flight to the space station in 2011. Now, they've made history once more. The Dragon mission is all about technology breakthroughs, right down to the astronauts' spacesuits. The suit is, is a one-piece suit. The suits provide air, uh, oxygen supply, they maintain pressure, the right temperature. The suits also have an integrated communication system. It plugs into the seat. You're sitting in your seat with your suit on, you actually plug in. The suit really is an integrated system of Dragon. Even the helmets are 3D printed. Both Dragon and the Falcon 9 rocket it travels on are designed to be reused. Dragon has been designed for reuse and reflight up to five times, similar to our Falcon vehicles. Um, not only do we refly Falcon for many missions, but we also refly uh, Dragons already. SpaceX believes a reusable spaceflight system is the pivotal breakthrough needed to reduce the cost of space access. Falcon stage separation confirmed. Copy to Alpha. After launch, the rocket's first stage made an extraordinary return to Earth dive and a pinpoint landing on this ocean platform. Falcon 9 has landed. The rocket's second stage delivered Crew Dragon to orbit after a 12-minute ride, where they promptly phoned home. Well, everyone, welcome aboard Dragon. Uh, my name is Doug. Next to me is uh, Bob. Today, we accomplished the first flight off the Florida coast in uh, quite some time, and Doug and I were really proud to have an opportunity to be a part of that. In spaceflight tradition, Bob and Doug named their spacecraft. With spacecraft going way back to the uh, Mercury era, including the Soyuz, we're, we're given the honor to name uh, this capsule. We would like to uh, welcome you aboard Capsule Endeavor. We both had our first flights on Shuttle Endeavor, and uh, it just meant so much to us to carry on that name. Both dads. They also had some fun in zero G for the kids. I think I was requested to do a backflip. I'm going to kind of do a side spin, which is a little bit of a permutation on that request. We did, it, in, it turns out, end up with one stowaway. We do have a, an Apatosaurus aboard. We both have two boys. Trimmer, the Apatosaurus, uh, got the vote from the boys to make the trip into space today with us. And so that uh, was a super cool thing for us to get a chance to do for both of our sons. And I hope we're super excited to see uh, their toys floating around with us on board. 
So with that, uh, I think it'll be good night from Capsule Endeavor. We're looking forward to seeing uh, Chris Cassidy and uh, his Russian colleagues on board the International Space Station uh, tomorrow morning. Good night, Megan and Theo. And Karen and Jack. The crew spent a day in Earth orbit, flying Dragon manually to test their control capability and preparing for their historic docking with the ISS. They took it off automatic and, and just were manually flying the craft around. It's got to be pretty fun, you know, just <laughs> zipping around space. Right on schedule, day two. Dragon performed a flawless precision docking with the station autonomously. Three meters to go. Two meters. One meter to go. We have docking at 7.16 a.m. Pacific time with the station and Dragon flying 262 statute miles right over the border between northern China and Mongolia. Bob and Doug, welcome to the International Space Station. The first time since the retirement of the space shuttle, you've completed a historic ride to the ISS and have opened up a new chapter in human space exploration. Demo-2 mission had been historic in a very different way. With an ongoing global pandemic, NASA had asked that no spectators attend the launch. We are asking people to watch from home. We want to keep everybody safe. And so we're asking people not to travel to the Kennedy Space Center. That makes me sad to even say it. But we need Demo-2 to be successful. And the best way we can do that is to do it while keeping everybody safe. And so the enthusiasm spread to social media. The pandemic itself uh, doesn't really change what we're trying to accomplish here. It will just change the experience and how people are able to share it and, and you know, absorb it as, it as it actually happens. Benkin and Hurley spent two months aboard ISS assisting the international crew with numerous science experiments, performing maintenance on the station, and monitoring the health of their Dragon spacecraft. Benkin, along with NASA astronaut Chris Cassidy, performed a total of four spacewalks, upgrading and replacing equipment. I'm proud to have been a part of much of the science activities that happened over the last two months. Just a, a few short uh, months ago, I didn't think I would do another spacewalk and uh, to now have the chance to have done uh, four more with uh, Commander Cassidy was just uh, icing on the cake for a, a, a wonderful mission. Hurley captured some amazing Earth views, including this image of a Saharan dust storm. Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? After two months on board ISS and a careful inspection of their capsule, Hurley and Benkin bid farewell to the space station crew. For Jack and Theo, uh, Tremor the Apatosaurus is uh, headed home soon, and uh, he'll be with uh, your dads. Uh, you'll have to pick which one of us is, uh, is your favorite. And undocked from the ISS. Please confirm your visors are down and that you are ready for undock and departure. Dragon copies, go from dock on time. Our visors are down and we're ready for departure. After a 19-hour journey, Crew Dragon separates from its trunk and performs its final deorbit burn to drop out of Earth orbit, bracing for a dramatic re-entry to Earth. Probably the riskiest part of the mission that requires a mind-boggling amount of precision for a spacecraft approaching at 17,500 miles per hour. The velocity and entry angle must be exact. If they come in too steep or too fast, the spacecraft can break up. If the angle is too shallow, they can skip off the Earth's atmosphere into oblivion or burn up. During the re-entry phase, the spacecraft is engulfed in a plasma bubble of hot gases, 
with temperatures that can reach 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit. This bubble creates a communications blackout between the spacecraft and Earth that could last up to six minutes. One final exchange between Mission Control and Crew Dragon. We show two minutes until predicted calm blackout. We will see you on the other side at 1842. Dragon Tappy, 1842, we'll talk to you then. And the nail biting begins. Dragon SpaceX, calm check. Dragon SpaceX, calm check. Never had you loud and clear. We're about 3.9 G. We have come out of the blackout period and we have reestablished connection with Dragon Endeavor. And so this is a view from that WB-57 airplane. You were looking at Dragon streaking across the sky on its re-entry through the Earth's atmosphere, aiming for a splashdown. A brewing hurricane in the Atlantic caused NASA to make a last minute change to an alternate splashdown site in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, and then those parachutes are gonna kick in. So there you have visual confirmation of the deployment of our drilled parachutes. This is the first of two parachute deployments. Two sets of drogue parachutes deploy to slow Crew Dragon for its splashdown. Okay, so those drogue chutes do the initial slowing and then they're ultimately gonna pull out the four main parachutes responsible for really slowing the spacecraft down. And here come the mains. So over the next few seconds, we will see those main parachutes do exactly like that, begin to expand as they capture more air, further decelerating the Dragon vehicle down to the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, what a gorgeous shot of Dragon coming back down. And there we have confirmation of splashdown. Dragon has returned to planet Earth. It is now back home. And the splashdown in the Atlantic Ocean is historic. The first time since Apollo. The SpaceX and NASA teams, welcome back to planet Earth and thanks for flying SpaceX. We were able to accomplish the test mission objectives and work through those, kind of get Dragon certified. Comes full circle, took years to get here. We brought the capability back to America and we came home safely to our families. This is something that the whole world can take uh, some, some uh, pleasure in and, and can really look at this as an achievement of humanity. Um, and there's, you know, th these, are, these are difficult times when, you know, there's, there's not that much good news. And, and I think this is one of, those, this is one of those, those things that is universally good, no matter where you are on planet Earth, this is a good thing. And, and I hope it brightens your day. This successful NASA-SpaceX public-private partnership is the key many believe opens the door to moon and Mars exploration. Today we're flying into low Earth orbit and in a few short years we want to be flying to the moon. We're going to the moon sustainably. We're going to learn how to live and work on another world for long periods of time. We're going to use the resources of the moon in order to live and work and we're going to take all of that knowledge onto Mars. This is hopefully the first step on a journey towards civilization on, on Mars, life becoming multiplanetary, you know, based on the moon, expanding beyond Earth. 
I think in a, in a microcosm, you're able to look down on the earth and there aren't country boundaries or the fragility of the earth. You know, I think we're all experiencing some of that as well right now with this uh, pandemic situation where that has connected us all in a way internationally that uh, causes us to reconsider our connection and, and how important it is for us to work together going forward. When STS-135 crew departed the ISS on the last shuttle flight in 2011, they left a flag for the next American mission to retrieve. This flag represents not just a symbol of our national pride and honor, but in this particular case, it represents a goal. This flag also will be flown prominently here by the forward hatch of No. 2 to be returned to Earth once again by an astronaut that launches on a U.S. vehicle, hopefully in just a few years. And now the Dragon and its crew have captured the flag and made history. Yeah, so this is the uh, flag that we left uh, here almost nine years ago. And uh, after the uh, end of the shuttle program, we decided uh, we, had, we would have a little friendly competition to see who came up and got this flag. and. Uh, Congratulations, SpaceX, you got the flag.